So the hawks, and then we've been seeing these massive turkey vultures. Sometimes they'll soar right over my head. I'm talking like just 15 yards above me and it casts this huge shadow. And on the rainy days, it was just a big mud pool. There he is. Hey, sweetie. If you're wondering why I'm not wearing shoes right now, it is because I'm trying to connect with the earth. I got a really nice diversity of plant species. I think it's about time I really hunker down and understand plants because at the end of the day, I want to create regenerative farms. Hey guys, and welcome back to Wild Primal. I apologize for the bad quality video and bad quality audio. I am um, using my iPhone right now. But bear with me, um, I also couldn't find this little converter for my lavalier mic, um, so I'm just using the mics in my phone, but I just wanted to get this video out to uh, to show you what I have been up to in the backyard. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll explain that, but that is where my quails roam around. Um, I initially built this structure about two years ago for chickens. I used to have chickens for two years. But right now I got quails. One of them's in the dust bath. And one of them's right there. Here, let me focus it. There we go. And my third quail, he is inside the coop. And the reason it looks like this is because this used to, everything you see inside here, it used to look just like this. It was all the same. It was green grass here and all throughout here. But when I had chickens, they they gradually picked off all the grass. After about like a year and a half of having chickens, this the grass here was all just gone. And it was just mud and dirt. And on the rainy days, it was just a big mud pool. Um, because I made the mistake of making my chicken run like permanent. I should have made it mobile where I could, I could move it easily to another patch of grass. Um, but you know, you live and you learn. Uh, and so all this new growth is from me not having anything in here for about a little under a year. I had nothing here. Actually, I think it was a little over a year, but yeah, like around 12 months, I had no animals here. It was just the, the bare land where all the grass had been taken off by the chickens and all the land over the, over the course of that time, plants, different plants started growing out of it. Um, it's pretty cool. It's kind of like a little science experiment I got going on here. In ecology, this is called succession. When um, a new ecosystem is basically growing out of a blank canvas. And so this is basically a prime example of succession taking place before my eyes here as I watch this land slowly start to turn green again. Not just like how it was, but you know, it's not just mud anymore. There's all types of plants growing here. I got a lot of clover. Clover puts nitrogen into the ground, so it just increases the soil nitrogen levels, which helps all plants, you know? So little tip for you gardeners, if you want your plants to thrive, you should plant clovers near them. I think it was peas, beans, and clovers that all uh, add nitrogen into the soil and uh, plants eat nitrogen. Well not atmospheric nitrogen. Plants can only eat nitrogen that has been eaten by the bacteria in the soil and pooped out as um, ammonia and nitrite and nitrate. Most of the air on planet Earth is nitrogen. That's that's what our plants on this planet eat. And um, I got a really nice diversity of plant species uh, growing in this land here. I didn't plant anything here. This is all succession, natural succession um, from seeds that were either already in the soil or that have blown in. Um, because my chickens, when I had chickens, they wouldn't allow anything to grow. Um, the moment a plant started growing out, the chickens would just pick it, pick it right off the ground. Whereas the quails, they're not as big. Um, uh, let me zoom in here for you guys. The quails are not as, they're not as big or as strong um to uproot the plants like the chickens were they still pick at the plants i've seen them pick at uh the leaves and stuff but i don't think it's to the point where they're damaging the plant communities that have uh taken place of this area oh we got a robin Let's see if i can get close to this robin for you guys i don't know if you can see that camera might not catch it 
but uh, I am getting a new camera. It's on the way to my house. I'm getting a uh, mirrorless Nikon camera. Stay tuned for much higher quality videos on this channel as I learn how to use my Nikon camera. It's going to be a big learning curve, but I plan to, uh, I'm all in. I'm all in on this video creation business. Um, anyways, let me explain what I'm doing here. This is the first year where I'm seriously gardening. I'm uh, usually every year I'm just super into animal agriculture, raising all types of birds and animals. Whereas this summer, I'm going to really try to uh, focus on plants. That's always been my mom's thing. She usually runs the garden with what's going on in the garden and stuff. But uh, this year I want to uh, I want to learn as much as I can about about plants and, and growing plants. There's the robin. There he, there he goes. And um, so what I'm doing here, with the help of my mom, we tilled this. This is all just dirt. So if you look underneath, there's nothing here but tilled dirt. There was a, there was a bunch of weeds growing here, and we tilled it all uh, with a shovel and uh, just loosened up the soil. And this cardboard right here is to protect the soil, the tilled soil from the harsh sunlight because we've been having some hot days in, in here in Michigan. Um, like the past three days here in Michigan, they were all like 75 to 80 degrees, really sunny. Um, and that can really uh, kill the microbial life forms in soil by just, you know, baking the soil, dehydrating it and the, the beneficial bacteria in, in that precious topsoil, it'll, it'll either die or it will retreat into deeper layers of soil. So, um, see, it's already pretty, pretty dry, even with the cardboard. So, again, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just trying my, my hand at creating a really good environment for plants. And I'm doing it through reading books and stuff. I'm reading various homesteading books and watching tons of videos on how to do this properly but you know you can only ever truly learn by doing through action and that's what this is this is action and um i got some wooden pallets that my neighbor gave me for free it was such a miracle how i acquired these wooden pallets like i've been looking i just started looking and then i realized our neighbor has a bunch of wooden pallets and uh, I just went up to his door and asked him if he you know if he still needs them and he said no and told me to take as many as I wanted so I took six um, and then we got some uh, growing mix here I think this stuff is well first let me tell you what I'm about to do with these wooden pallets what I want to do with these pallets is I want to create um, with that cart engine go by sorry a lot of people like to race here in Michigan when the weather gets really, really nice. Freaking cars, car engines. But anyways, let me tell you what I plan on doing with these wooden pallets. I want to essentially make a, um, a box. I want to make a cube, one, two, three, four walls and a base, but no ceiling. So a cube without the top part. That's all I want to do with these pallets. And um, the, the extra pallets I want to possibly I want to use them for building a wood shed to store wood in outside but yeah once I got my box it's it's just going to be a box made out of pallets and so the walls they're going to have these big spaces and I don't plan on filling the spaces in because this is where I want to do composting um this is I read this in a book uh what is the name of that book um but yeah I found out in a homesteading book that you can compost organic materials from from your kitchen and um you know banana peels eggshells coffee grounds and you can just keep piling them up into a box made out of wooden pallets and um turning it every day with a with a shovel or a dedicated shovel or something to oxygenate it and so it's crucial for your storage area to have lots of gaps uh, for air and oxygen to to come in and have contact with all that organic matter um, the organic matter that you are putting in there we already got composting going on here in this soil we usually just toss in banana peels barium um, eggshells uh, onion 
peelings and stuff and um, churn it into the soil. But this, this year, this summer, I want to do it where it's in a big storage area separate from our garden. And I just want to churn all that organic uh, material and do it the way that a lot of homesteaders and farmers do it where they either create a pile of compost um, and then, you know, periodically take the compost and put it into their soil where they're actually growing plants. But, so yeah, I think that's a really good system or else, you know, why would the farmers be doing it? Um, that's why I want to try that system out. And I'm hoping that uh, if, it, if it all goes accordingly, the organic material that I place into this uh, box that I'm about to create, over time, it should start to turn into compost, really nice compost, which is like this dark, earthy, um, you know, almost like soil, but you know, it's not soil, it's decomposed compost from organic material. And that stuff is gold for, for gardening. So once the process, the scientific process, which I'm still studying, is has gone through, I'll have like basically a, a box full of this beautiful compost that I can, whenever I want, place into uh, my garden. Whenever, let's say I want to plant, now we got a plane going by. That plane go by. But yeah, essentially what I was saying is if you want, if you have a source of compost and the biological systems are all, you know, doing what they're supposed to be doing and you did it all correctly, you should have, you know, the ability to take compost whenever you want and put it into um, your plants by, um, well, what, I, what I'm thinking right now is I, if I want to plant something, I'll just dig a hole, scoop some, some of that precious compost, put it into that hole, maybe put in a, a fresh banana, peel some fresh eggs, uh, eggshells as well, and then place the plant um, and then cover, cover up the soil. That's one way to really um, give that plant a really good foundation of nutrients uh, and, and food, essentially, to start its life on, on, your, on your garden. I'm sure there are tons of other ways to utilize compost other than what I just said. It's essentially like a source of this really rich, nutrient-rich material that you can incorporate into your soil to make your soil better, to make the health of your soil better, which at the end of the day is the basis of all life on this planet, including the life in our gardens and farms. I do not plan on using any unnatural fertilizers and stuff. I know nothing is truly unnatural, but what I mean by unnatural is when we are moving stuff around on, on planet Earth, taking it from one area, exporting it, importing it, all that jazz, that is unnatural because everything you need to have, you know, good food production systems should be found in your local region. And I'm going to prove that. I'm going to prove that with what I'm doing here. If you stay tuned and watch future videos on this channel, you'll see what we are able to, you know, conjure up. It may not be the best on my first year, you know, like I said. Like I said, this is my first year where I'm really taking gardening and plants seriously. I used to always just be you know, all about animal agriculture. That's all I really was obsessed with. I had chickens. Um, you can actually see a couple of my chicken videos. They are still on this channel, but I think it's about time I really hunker down and understand plants because at the end of the day, I want to create regenerative farms. There's nothing more amazing in this entire universe to me than a regenerative farm because it's essentially an ecosystem. It's like, I've always been into aquariums and, uh, keeping fish and lizards and stuff in an aquarium. I've been doing this ever since I was a kid and I've come to find over the years that when you incorporate live plants with live animals, it, it just works because that cycle gets created where the animals waste products are being consumed partially if not fully consumed by the plant plants that you have in your uh, tank. So when you're talking about regenerative farming, it's essentially a tank with all types of plants and animals except they are serving a purpose they are directly supporting you and your family and your loved ones with with food so for me this is it this is uh this is it for me like i love this stuff i love learning about it if you're wondering why i'm not wearing shoes right now it is because i'm trying to connect with the earth's uh magnetic waves and stuff it's complicated but there are health benefits to walking 
outside barefoot obviously in in land that is safe to walk on i'm pretty confident that our land is safe to walk on there's no broken glass or anything like that and we do not use any chemicals on this in in our backyard got some leftover poultry netting that we plan on uh creating like a roof over the chicken run here or the quail run i should say so we're just gonna create a roof over this thing with that leftover poultry wire because there have been a lot of birds of prey just kind of soaring above our house so i have no doubt in my mind that some of those birds would not hesitate to scoop up one of our quails where did our quails go we've been seeing a lot of uh a lot of these little hawks that I couldn't identify because they were just too quick, but they look like they're tannish brown and really compact, compactly built. I don't know where they are. Maybe they're on the other side of the coop where I can't get a good angle on them. Oh, well there's Sweetie, my quail with the bent neck. There he is, that little brownish brown that you see, that's him. He, he was born, he was born a little deformed and I had to take a lot of extra measures had to do a lot of extra work just to make sure he he survived and he did survive so let me go show him to you there he is there he is hey sweetie that's his little hangout spot there's like that overhanging bit of uh dead grass that he loves to just go inside where he thinks no one can no one can see him but I can see you, man. Um, I had to feed him with a syringe. I had to feed him water because his neck was bent and he couldn't even drink water out of his bowl. He couldn't even eat properly. And uh, yeah, I had to search up how to treat that. And basically I just had to give him more nutrients um, like selenium and stuff, egg yolk. So I did feed him a lot of egg yolk and fed him selenium and water through a syringe, but his neck is still pretty bent. But, I mean, he doesn't know that. He doesn't care about it. He's mentally mentally all there. Just that physical uh, disability. He doesn't see it as a disability, that's for sure. Because um, he's always running around like crazy. But, yeah, so we're going to build a roof over this. Because we've been seeing some uh, large birds of prey. So the hawks. And then we've been seeing these massive turkey vultures that they just soar. They, don't, they barely flap their wings. They only flap during takeoff and landing. But... They barely flap when they're actually flying and they're so massive they're not the biggest birds here in north america but they're the biggest ones that we get to see on a regular basis and they're such silent flyers i don't know if turkey vultures are silent flyers probably not as silent as owls but they're pretty darn silent and sometimes they'll soar right over my head i'm talking like just 15 yards above me and they cast this huge shadow and it's pretty it's kind of terrifying but it's also really amazing it's almost like a living dinosaur but as cool as they are these beautiful birds of prey um i do not want them taking any of my animals so i got three quails right now um might be getting more this summer uh and that poultry netting will protect them when we create a roof over here um, that's a blueberry plant we're going to be getting more blueberry plants and raspberry plants to fill up this area some more where there's like areas with no plants we're probably just gonna dig a hole put some banana peels and eggshells in there coffee grounds whatever place a uh, blueberry plant or a raspberry plant in that hole and kind of do that in different parts of this area and by the end of the summer or you know within a few years this should have big bushes bursting with blueberries and raspberries and uh quails running running around eating the berries eating the bugs nibbling on the leaves nibbling on the clover the dandelions which have all types of nutrients and antioxidants that are very beneficial for them because um, they were beneficial for chickens and so i'm assuming they're pretty beneficial for all types of birds such as caternix quail and yeah it's just going to be like one big aquarium one big ecosystem uh, one big managed ecosystem and that is regenerative agriculture that is permaculture and that is, I would say, my main obsession in life. I have a lot of passions in life, but uh, I would say this is this is the biggest passion I have because it just combines everything that I'm passionate about. I love animals. I've had all types of pets ever since I was a kid up until now. I've had, oh my God, I can't even 
well i'll just list off some right now when i was five i had a betta fish then i had a bearded drag or no i had a betta fish and then i had a leopard gecko and then i you know i kept all types of bugs and stuff temporarily that i found so that number is huge i've had hamsters i've had a turtle i've had snakes i, I have snakes right now i actually have three snakes they're um I can show you guys them in future videos on this channel but yeah I, i'm obsessed with animals and i also love to cook i sometimes i cook up stuff and give it to my neighbors and they're always blown away by it um not not saying that arrogantly i'm just saying that i really love to cook and um it's something that relaxes me um, when i get to know how my food is made so animals food Put those together what do you get you get regenerative agriculture and you get permaculture and um yeah i just love being outside ever since i was a kid always loved to be outside um and learn the language of nature so stay tuned if you want to see how this project ends up gotta fix that raccoon can get in there i had a raccoon kill one of my chickens a few years back um but we we got this door that we just lock every night the reason it's off the hinges is because the hinges broke when we had like over three feet of snow in this area but uh yeah um our magnolia tree is blooming right now wow that's pretty amazing because these flowers they weren't even open this morning i woke up pretty early this morning to open the quail door and there's one flower that was actually open like this seems like they're all open now that's that's ridiculous how fast this tree metamorphosized in less than 24 hours in like 10 hours but yeah this is our magnolia tree um and i got all this land that i still don't really know what i'm gonna do in terms of food production but probably gonna plant some stuff here uh got a pile of two piles of branches for kindling for whenever we have fires We'll bring out the chairs here and use these logs as kind of like um little tables for coffee mugs or whatever but in terms of food production i'm not doing too much in this area it's mainly that half um and over here we got we got uh, lima beans and these these beans and these viney plants yeah we got a lot of composting here oh, this is a prime example of what compost is it'll essentially start to look like that if it's if it's uh the biological processes are doing what they're supposed to do it should look like that and that is very highly nutrition nutritious for plants and um we were tilling this earlier and every time i tilled the soil all types of earthworms and bugs like I, I could probably find one right now for you so many bugs here see here here's an ant here's a wolf spider that just went by Man, I would love hanging out here as a kid and my with my magnifying glass and my little jar, my little pill bottle where I would um, collect insects to observe them for for that day and then, you know, release them. But yeah, we got stuff here. This is a chicken tractor that I built that kind of broke apart. I don't know what I'm going to be able to salvage out of it now, but all the wood that you see, most of it, it was just little pieces of wood that were lying around on the top of our garage and i was able to construct an entire a large chicken tractor out of it i only had to buy like a, a couple of these planks i had to buy but most of it it was just stuff we had lying around um i wish that thing would not have broken because uh i would have uh done some rotational not rotational grazing because these aren't grazers but i would have done some rotational movements with uh quail that i have here but yeah like i said this is regenerative agriculture this is succession right here what you see it'll be it will be regenerative agriculture once we're producing uh berries blueberries raspberries and whatever else we decide to plant over here on these beds then you could call it a regenerative farm but right now this is this is ecology this is a managed ecosystem and this is um increasing the health of soil by tilling it by throwing organic matter in there i also put in some of my aquarium water because I, I have an aquarium of freshwater fish right now i have a 20 gallon with a betta fish and some amano shrimp 
and um, a little algae eater. That tank is awesome. I love looking at it. It reduces my stress and I can show it in a future video. But when I clean that tank, um, all the dirty water, you know, that people usually just throw it on the sink, that's actually really good for, for your garden. I think it's called aquaponics when you incorporate aquariums with, with growing plants. You can use your aquarium water to uh, kind of use it as steroids for your plants. You just pour it into the soil, you water your plants with dirty aquarium water. They will love you for that because that water is filled with nitrates and um, plants, plants can, that's bioavailable for them. They can eat it and uh, even if you're not managing your aquarium properly and your dirty aquarium water is filled with ammonia, your plants will, will enjoy the ammonia, even though your fish are probably being killed by it slowly. Study your fish cycle if you want to keep fish. But anyways, yeah, just want to share with you guys the projects that I'm currently up to in uh, in my backyard in the summer of 2023. Got a lot planned, a lot of, a lot of work to do to um, get all these projects finished and get these systems going to produce natural organic food. Little food production systems managing food production systems, managing ecosystems. That's what this is. Um, so yeah, so yeah, stay tuned for when I, you know, post my next video on, on everything that I just showed you guys. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm just trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to grow food. I plan on, you know, being successful at this whole growing food in unison with nature thing that I'm doing because I really enjoy learning about it and I really do believe in the benefits of it for our planet and for our society so yeah i think that about wraps it up this my videos always end up being way too long than what i initially intended them to be i wanted to make like a six minute video just now and now god knows how long it is but yeah i just love talking about this stuff i love learning about it and sharing how how i'm progressing with these projects so yeah i think that just about covers it so like the video if you enjoyed it leave a comment and uh until next time and remember keep it wild